Okay guys, welcome to the show. It's me again, Paul P. And I am here in Manila Hotel. Technically the second or I think this is the oldest hotel here in Manila. But I just researched that there is another hotel that's older than this. It is the Luneta Hotel. So technically this is not the oldest but this is the most memorable one because it's been open since 1904. Okay. Yes, it's an old hotel. Might be haunted now, just kidding. Uh, technically, I've been coming here with my grandparents and my mom. And guess what? Today is actually her birthday. So my mom is sitting at the other table because she doesn't want to show herself on the vlog. So I'll be, first of all, happy birthday, Ma. Thank you for supporting me all the way. And it's because of you that I decided to vlog because of your ideals and support that I continue to do this okay so I'm actually celebrating her birthday today she is way past her prime but still very energetic and I hope that in the future she can show herself to the vlog one of these days okay so let me start it with this. This is again Manila Hotel. The cafe's name is Cafe Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang is a somewhat like a flower or a tree or plant. It's here in the Philippines. It has a certain smell there that smells awesome. It looks like an orchid. Okay, so I will now check out the food and I'll check out the what do you call this? The ambiance of the restaurant. So, tada! Let's go for our first run. Bye, buddy. Okay guys, so I got my first plate and here's what I got. They have three kinds of shomai, so technically dim sum. I got some cold cuts and the only, I don't think this is considered as dim sum, but this is their spicy deep fried spirits. Okay, so we'll start off with their cold cuts or their charcuterie. Start off with mortadella. Okay. See that white spot? Those white spots? That's fat. And I know it's going to be good. Let, let's focus, focus. There, look at that. Ooh. Let's give this one a try. It has a mild porky taste to it. A little salty, but it has this nice mouthfeel. It's so smooth. It's actually almost velvety. Okay, so now let's try this. This is their smoked prosciutto or no, no, this is their, yeah, this is their smoked prosciutto. Look at that. They say, if you want to make ligao or to court a chef, always give them cold cuts or charcuterie and cheese. That's the best way to get to their heart. Look at that. really strong smoky flavor not that fatty though but the cure is really nice it has this certain saltiness to it that's really nice it would have been perfect to pair it with that melon there but 
as much as possible. I don't like eating fruits when I'm in the buffet, but that is really good prosciutto. Ooh, yeah, I can still taste the smokiness. Ooh. Next, this one is the salami. You can see there's black, there's pieces of black pepper in it. Look at that. And you can see that fatty globs there. That is flavor. Mm. See? Nice and salty. Really fatty. It has this uh, spice, spiciness at the back. It's because of that um, black pepper. Really nice. I think that would be that would be awesome in a sandwich. Like really. Okay, this one is their normal prosciutto. Look at that fat. It's glistening, guys. You can't go wrong with that. So it's not like the other one that is smoked. It has no smoky flavor to it, but it still has that nice cured flavor to it. That is like a kick. That's really nice. Sorry, I'm saying nice too much. It's just really... I can't explain it. It's, I like it. That's what... Look at this. This is their copa. It's basically nicely marbled pork. Cured for a long time. Look at that. Mmm. Okay, that one, nice and nice and cured, has a certain uh, fattiness to it, but it has this overall great mouth feel. It coats the fattiness. The fattiness coats the mouth really well. That's really an awesome copa. Okay, now let's move on to. The dim sum. This one is chicken. Chicken dim sum. Chicken shumai. Okay, look at that, guys. It has a green pea on top. They make their shumai in house. So, this is freshly made. It has that really nice chickeny taste to it, but that wrapper is also nice. But I find it it lacks a bit of salt. Maybe I should dip it in soy sauce, but I didn't get soy sauce because I wanted to try the full flavor of the dim sum. Now this one, this one is unique. They made this. This is beef. This one is beef with quail egg. Wait, we'll open. We'll look at this. There's a huge quail egg inside. Beef with quail egg. Mm. Mm. There's a piece of this crunchy, like bamboo shoots inside. And that egg, really creamy. It's oh, the egg is like uh, it's not not soft boiled, but it's hard boiled, but still has that nice uh, creamy flavor because of that yolk. Awesome. Now let's try this one. This one is my favorite because it has shrimp. I love shrimp. This is. Pork and shrimp dim sum or dumpling. Look at that. There. 
full push. There it is. Nice and mixed pork and shrimp. Mm. You can't go wrong with that. You can taste the pork, and you can taste the shrimp. It's balanced. It's really nice. That's that. All the skins of the shumai are nice and thin, and it's not sticky. So, it's really, really well made shumai. Now let's try this. Let's move on to the last dish here in my plate for my first plate. This is the deep fried spicy spirits. I wish they cut this smaller, but what the hell. I thought it was going to be too spicy but it's just right and it has the nice oh there it is the garlicky spice at the back but it also has this nice star anise flavor to it it's actually really good I prefer it steamed though like with the tausi but this variation is awesome okay so I'll finish this you know, go for a second round. Come on. Okay, guys. So, let's start with. I know I usually go for the seafoods now, but I'm having it grilled. So let's start with this. This is the Charus Korea or their grilled stuff. And I got a piece of their roast. This is the US Angus Charusco. I'll try this one. I'll try it without any sauce first. Oh, it looks tender. Nice and medium rare. Ooh. Look at that. Nice and medium rare. Yes, I know a lot of you would say you would prefer it rare or a little bit more cooked. But this is how I like my steak. Medium rare. Hmm. There's a slight sweetness to it. There's a slight sweetness to it. Maybe because they grilled it in the same in the same grill with the barbecue. But you can really taste the beef though. It has a nice uh, irony flavor to it. It's nice. It's really tender too. Okay. So now we'll try it with their gravy. Look at that. Mm. Nice and glistening. Mm. Mm. Okay, that peppery gravy somewhat overpowered that sweetness but it has this certain um, flavor to that it has the yeah it has a nice rounded peppery flavor but it also has this certain sourness to it so now we'll try their sausage Ooh, look at that. 
This is their homemade house cured sausage. Mm. Mm. It, it uses an all natural casing on the outside. It's really nice. Okay. Uh, I have to cut the video short. I'll continue this after. Yeah, after about two seconds, I'm going to change the battery. My camera's dying. So, yeah. Okay, guys, so we're back. Change the battery. Let's continue. Now we'll try this barbecue ribs. We'll see if we can get a nice, decent, a decent piece from this. Kind of tough look. Yeah. <laughs> the barbecue doesn't want to get eaten because it's really, 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 really tough, guys. Okay, I got a decent piece, nice and fatty, with a bit of meat. We'll give it a try. Yeah. It's a bit tough. A bit spicy, but flavor-wise, it kind of overpowers the flavor of the pork ribs. I don't like that. Sorry, I rarely say that I don't like something, but that one I don't like. Okay, so I'll continue eating this, and then we'll move on to the next plate. Here's our next plate, which is the seafood. Now, for a change, I will start with the crab instead of the shrimp. Look at that. This is a huge crab. So, we'll take the carapace off. Okay. And then we'll just aim again for this spot right here where all the lump crab meat is. There it is. See that? Bump crab meat, guys. We'll give it a try first. There. Nice and sweet. But it's not as. Uh, it is still fresh. Like, uh, but it wasn't swimming a while ago. It was like swimming, like. Maybe yesterday. Okay. See, this is the thing. Either that or it's overcooked. If you can mash up the meat, then it's not fresh. See that? If the meat becomes a bit mushy, that means it's not that fresh. But if it's like flaky and everything, that means it's really fresh. Okay? Yeah, it's a bit mushy, but it's still somewhat fresh and still sweet. So it's not that it's not as fresh as the other one that I've tried, but flavor-wise, it's really good. Okay, I asked them to grill this because I don't want to butter or anything on it because it's gonna compromise my, the flavor of the crab. Let's see if we can get this complete crab. Well, the crab is not agreeing with me, so let's move on to the shrimp. Okay, I taught you guys before how to do this. You take off the head, 
Hmm? Take off the head. Take off the tail. Then, twist it around. Insert your knife at the bottom of the tail. Twist. Once again here, insert it all the way through. Twist. Look at that. Get one big piece of shrimp. Perfectly peeled. Okay, we'll give this one a try. I didn't get any soy sauce or anything because I want to taste the true flavor of shrimp. Mm. Nice and juicy. It has that sweetness to it, but it has that really grilled taste to it. But as I said, maybe I should have gotten some soy sauce. It lacks a bit saltiness. So, but freshness wise, I give the shrimp around a good 9 out of 10. The, sh the crab around 7 out of 10. So, I will continue eating this and I'll move on to the next plate afterwards. See ya! Okay guys, uh, here's my next plate, here's what I got, first of all I got Peking duck rolled up in lotus wrapper with hoisin sauce, you can't see it on camera but I got more of that pork spare ribs, Korean grilled chicken, this, this is actually a cheat, I'm cheating here, I got the shrimps on top of the sotang hon there. You're supposed to eat it with the sotang hon, but I just got the shrimps. I love shrimps. This one is already butterflied with garlic. This is their belly chon. And okay, usually I don't eat carbs on my on my plate. I don't like carbs on my plate when I'm in a buffet. But today is special because this is beef ho fun. I'm not eating this because it's special because I don't eat beef hoa fun as often but I'm eating this because it is my mom's birthday and we have a tradition here in the Philippines and if somebody's having a birthday or celebrating their birthday you're supposed to eat noodle any kind of noodle specifically long noodles to signify long life for the birthday celebrant so that's why I got beef hoa fun and look at it guys look at that so let's start off with yeah let's start off with the peking duck look at that guys there's no easy way of eating this but by hand mm. Nice and fatty. The skin is not any more crunchy though, but it still has that duck flavor that's so good. And that sweet hoisin sauce with that nice pancake. This is, I think, uh, what you should call a uh, Chinese burrito. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Now we'll try their 
Korean fried chicken, uh, Korean grilled chicken, sorry. You can see this is actually chicken thighs. I think it's glazed with something. Then drizzled with uh, sesame seeds. Mm, smells good. Mm. It's a bit tough, a bit overcooked, but that sauce on the outside, really good. You can taste the nuttiness from the from the sesame seeds, but there's a certain, I think they glaze this with honey or something, it's really good. Wait, let's try the middle part. The end part is a bit overcooked. I think the middle part will be nice and juicy. Yeah. The middle part with the skin is nice and moist, nice and juicy. It has that same nuttiness and same sweetness from that glaze. It's really good. Why didn't I have this in the Korean place when I ate in? Maybe. I'll try and look for that next time. Now let's move on to their beef ho fan. Technically ho fan is mostly eaten with chopsticks. Okay. Beef ho fan. Look at that. Happy birthday, mom. Mm. Mm. The beef is so tender, just melted in my mouth. It has that stir fry taste to it that, that they walk hot or it's basically that charred flavor to it that noodles are so actually a bit al dente I love it I could eat more of this but that would be uh, against my strategy how to eat it, how to strategically attack the buffet if you want to watch that video I'll put the link below and maybe get check it out that's how i basically attack every time i go to a buffet make sure that you get the best uh, the best uh bag for your buck and you can basically maximize the flavor and the taste and your experience in the buffet okay so i'll put that link below more noodles longer life Mm. That's good. Okay, now let's try their belly chon. This is the only one that had skin. I don't think it's crunchy anymore. We'll get we'll slice it with the skin, the meat and the fat. One big piece. Look at that. Mm. Actually, very tender. I was hoping it's going to it's going to be a bit tough, but it's actually really tender. It has a certain um tang lad or lemon grass flavor to it, and that skin is still there's still a bit of crunch to it. Awesome. I think it would have been better with a bit of that Mang Tomas or liver sauce but as is it's actually good good lechon now let's try their shrimp look at that oh it comes off easily look at that it's smothered in garlic guys super 
garlicky. Flavor wise. Whew. Don't eat this when you have a date. That's one thing. And keep away from the vampire when you eat this. <laughs> I'm sure they're gonna freak out because it's too garlicky. But I love garlic. Okay? So I won't review anymore the pork chop. Or the spare ribs, if you've already seen the review of that. I will now finish this and then move on to the next plate. Most likely, I'll be getting the roast beef and some of the Indian dishes. So, yeah. Here's what I got. This is my last main course plate. As usual, couldn't stand it. I got more of the belly chon. You can see. So we won't review that anymore. I got a bit, a bit of the roast beef. I asked for the end cut. Yes, it is going to be tough. I know, but it has more seasoning. So I love it. This is the grilled chicken in pandan. I got a piece of naan and roti. There's sambal shrimp, the stir fried shrimp, Filipino style, and the Cajun style grilled shrimp. Okay. Now, I didn't read my. I did read it there, but the sambal is supposed to be a bit spicy. You know me, I'm not a fan of spicy food. So, we'll start with that. We'll go two pieces first. And just to be sure that it's, I can take it, I'm going to have some of naan with it. Look at that. Oh, you can really smell that curry, that curry flavor. Hopefully it's not that spicy. Yeah. Mild, yeah, right. Whew. It's not as bad as what I had. That killer fresh cracker from from the last episode is really deadly. But this is actually a bit less. Still spicy, but less. Okay. We'll finish this already. I don't want it on my plate. It might make everything spicy. We'll finish it with a bit of that roti. Mm. That's good roti. That's also spicy. Whew. Okay, let's try the stir fried Filipino style seafood. Basically, I didn't get seafood, I only got the shrimp. There's mussels and uh, clams in there, but 
I only like shrimp, so shrimp it is. Not too good, not too bad. Could have been better. But it's a bit overcooked. Now, let's try this beef. Roast beef. Oh, it's not. Looks tender. We get the fatty part. Look at it, it's glistening. Mm. No, no. That's a bit of salt. No. See? Always get salt on your hand first. Then you go salt bay on this. Okay. We'll go for a second bite. It lacks salt a bit. There. Mm. Really good beef. It has an irony taste to it. It actually has nice charred flavor to it because I had it grilled. Sorry for the sweat. Basically, from all the meat that I've been eating. <laughs> now we will try this shrimp. This is the Cajun grilled shrimp. Yes, I've eaten already most of Poseidon's Alagan shrimp, but I love my shrimp, sorry. Not that. Ooh. And that's good. It has that, oh, it has a spice to it. But flavor wise, it's really nice. It tastes like somewhat like a you know, the kind of shrimp that you'd eat in a gumbo that would be that would have been perfect with cornbread okay now we will try the grilled chicken in pandan pandan is a type of leaf it has a certain smell to it and flavor to it basically sometimes used for uh, desserts and sort of savory dishes so that it makes the chicken so moist Oh, you can smell that pandan. Okay, so let's give this one a try. Mm. It has a certain sweetness to it. That real flavor. It's really moist. The chicken's cooked all the way through. It just kept it a bit fatty. It's what I love. It, it doesn't have that inner salt flavor to it, but that uh, grilled chicken with honey is somewhat like it has a sweet taste to it, but you can still taste the flavor of the chicken. So that's what's nice about this. Look at that. Okay. Okay. So the lechon, you know already. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna review that. It's already good. You know that. So I will finish this. Then I'm gonna go for dessert next. See ya.
Okay guys, sorry I forgot to turn on the camera. I already right, took my first bite. <laughs> I have two plates for dessert. This one is my crepe plate and the other one is the assorted stuff that they have there. I am going to review this one first because the ice cream is starting to melt. This is a chocolate and caramel crepe with a Ferrero Rocher ice cream which they make in-house. We'll try their ice cream first. You can really taste that hazelnutty taste and that nice chocolate oh, mouth feels awesome. Really smooth. You can uh, taste the ice crystals, which is great, and that is really good ice cream. Now we will try the ice cream with a bit of the crepe. Oh, it's oozing. Look at that. No, we'll try the crepe as is first. It's oozing, guys. It's oozing. The crepe is nice and soft. Nice and smooth. I wanted it a bit crunchy, but still awesome. That camera is good. I just wish that they could have made it a bit thicker so that I, I could easily scoop it up. <laughs> but all in all, it's good. We'll try it with a bit of the ice cream. Ice cream with crepe and caramel chocolate. Ooh, wait. Zoom it. Focus, focus. There it is. Mm. The warm crepe. With the warm caramel, contrasting that smooth, chocolatey, somewhat bitter ice cream, that is good. Okay, so I will continue eating this later. Now let's try, let's start with the assorted pastries. This is what I got for my dessert plate. Bread and butter pudding, San Rival, Biko. Now, technically, it's a um, milfoy, but it, I, I find it as call it as a Napoleones, Brasso de Mercedes, and a Silvana. Okay, let's we'll start with the bread and butter pudding, the standard. Look at that. Focus. There it is. Ooh, bread and butter pudding. Mm. Not as caramel as I, I, I wanted it, but it still has that custardy goodness that you're looking for in bread and butter pudding. Really light, but I'm still looking for that caramel bottom like a leche flan. Okay, it's still good, but bread and butter pudding. Now, we'll start with the uh, San No, we'll start with the uh, Filipino. This is Biko. Technically, this is not supposed to be dessert. It's supposed to be kakanin. This is glutinous rice, cooked with coconut milk and brown sugar. Focus. Yes. This may be one of the few times that I'll be eating rice in a buffet. Because they serve it as Biko. Mm. You can really taste the gata or the coconut milk. It's not that sweet, or maybe it's just because I had something very sweet before eating that. It lacks sweetness right now. But it's still good Biko. Really smooth. Really sticky. Ooh. And I'd love to have that with a bit of, uh, what do you call this? Uh, we call it hot chocolate. It's basically Filipino hot chocolate, also known as butter. You cook it in a butter roll. That's with the tablea. That's the one. 
That would be perfect with the Blea. Okay, now let's move on to their Napoleones or their Milfoy. Milfoy is basically very thin pastry, like a puff pastry, stuffed with creme de patisserie and glazed with this white icing. Really, the last time I ate meal for this good was in Bacolod. Man, that's good stuff. Not overly sweet. That creamy creme de patisserie, plus that crunchy outside. Oh. The layers is so good. Look at that. Layers of goodness, guys. Okay. Now we'll try their San Serval. You know, San Serval is basically a somewhat like a uh, a cake that's made of layers of this either peanut or cashew pavlova thin thin pavlova wafers then topped with buttercream 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 they added coffee to this somewhat overpowers the flavor of the buttercream not my favorite now we'll try the sylvanas This looks promising. Ooh, wee. This is pure white buttercream. Mm. Light and airy. It has a certain flavor that I love with a Silvana. Silvana is basically somewhat like a San Serval. But without any flavoring, it's just basically supposed to be buttercream and that wafer. Now we'll try their Brasso de Mercedes. Oh, it's really light. Brasso de Mercedes is basically, if you can see, the white part is egg white and the yellow part is, is like a egg custard, egg yolk custard. The sweetness actually doesn't come from the white half, it's come from the yellow cup. So. Let's see the balance of the sweetness of this. It's good. But the, the yellow part is a bit green. But I like it. I, not my favorite though. Not my favorite Rock to the Mercedes ever, but it's still good. Okay? So I will finish with my dessert, then I'll give you the review of the this restaurant later on. See ya. Okay guys, so here's my review of Cafe Ilang Ilang. Sorry. It's based on the five criteria. Location, ambiance, service, food, and price. Start with location. Location wise, it's very easy to get to. It is one of the oldest ones here, so it it's right smack in the middle of the heart of Manila. I mean, the heart of Manila is right beside the Rizal Park. Okay, it's near Carino Grandstand. It's a long Ross Boulevard. It's easy to get to. So I give that a 5 out of 5. Okay. Sorry. Now, talk about ambiance. Ambiance. The seats are very comfortable. Even though they have armrests, they're still wide armrests, so I can still fit. There's a bit, there's a difference of chairs here, like they have lounging chairs and they have just high chairs. It accommodates everybody, okay? So, I give that 5 out of 5 when it comes to their chairs. But, when it comes to their food layout or the buffet layout, it's kind of complicated. 
like one area is just for the desserts and then you have to move on to another area for main course then it goes around another area to the it's like four or five different locations within the whole restaurant so imagine moving around in a very full restaurant with a plate of hot food it's gonna be hard to move, maneuver around people just to get food so with that in mind i'll have to give it a four even though they have great heating i will still have to deduct that one point and give them a four now so about service service wise the staff are very friendly i actually believe my former teacher worked here i miss it i miss learning from him <laughs> Uh, service staff is really nice. They're very accommodating. Every time, anything I need, they will give it to me. They actually, I actually forgot to bring chopsticks a while ago, and one of the servers noticed it and he ran and got me chopsticks. So that attention to detail, I have to give him about a four out of five. Okay, the only thing I don't like here is uh, some of the, the, the chefs are. We call this uh, frowning. I don't know why, but let's put it this way: aesthetic appeal. They have a lot of servers and chefs here that are gorgeous, like women, gorgeous. Like whoa, cute, really cute, especially in the desserts area. It's a feast for the mouth and the eyes. Okay, sorry, not being sexist here, but I'm saying they're really eye-catching. So I give them a four out of five. Now let's talk about food. There are a few items that I like. A few items that are unique. Uh, I was looking forward to their truffle lechon, but they changed the menu last minute and made it into a Mindanao style food uh, cuisine, which is actually okay because the belly chon was actually good. And they had a few items that are only found of few dishes that can be cooked, or can be served halal, which is most of Mindanao. Most of Mindanao is Muslim, so halal food, but it's still delicious. Okay, so I give that a good four out of five also. Now the price, price-wise, it's a bit pricey. I paid around a uh, good two thousand. I think 2300 per head for this meal but if it is for my mom's birthday even if it's 5000 pesos I'm willing to spend because she means that much to me okay so I give the price around a good 4 out of 5 so a total of 4 out of 5 average for this whole restaurant for Cafe Ilang Ilang and would I come back here? Yes, I would come back here. It is an institution on itself. And if given a choice, I like the ambiance of the hotel. It's somewhat like a... Uh, if I don't know if you've been to the old hotels in the States. Basically something like that. It has a nostalgic feel to it. But the cuisine and the equipment are all modern. <coughs> Sorry. So that's why I give them a 4 out of 5. Always good on points. So thank you for watching the vlog. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you can recommend other places, comment down below. I'm sorry, this is my second or third buffet as of this year. Because I've been... <laughs> I've been a good boy, no? Uh, it's because we've been ha having a few celebrations in my family, and hopefully in the future I will find another place that I can vlog in. I'm truthfully, I'm kind of eyeballing one of the biggest ones here in Manila, but I will have to schedule that on a special occasion again. So don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next vlog, guys. Follow me on Instagram at Paul Always Gutom, never was on. on Twitter at Paul Always Gutom, and on Facebook at Always Gutom, never was on. So, till the next vlog, see you in the dining room, and tara, kain tayo.